last tactic video you guys said you guys wanted more cats in my intros here's another one of them this is Cass he is an absolute big baby what's going on everybody Gormy here today we got the first rebuild of FM 23 and this is probably the hardest rebuild I have ever had to do and there's a couple reasons why so had to do it two different times because the first time the game crashed again and again and again and again and then the files were corrupted and then I lost everything and I was four seasons in almost done with it the second time around it went much better but in season five there is a major plot twist to the whole thing so definitely stay tuned if you guys happen to enjoy today's video please leave a like comment and subscribe subscribe is 100 free so want to hit that sub button also, with this rebuild, at the end, I will be giving you guys a five-year plan for you guys if you choose to accept this save because I will be putting this five-year rebuild in my Discord. So if you guys wish to give it a go, please feel free to hop in the Discord. It will be down below in the description. Would love to have you. Great community over there. But without further ado, let's get into the rebuild. So, the first rebuild we are doing this year, as you guys can clearly tell by the thumbnail, but also just to reiterate it, we are doing Parma in Serie B, once a very historic club that has fallen on hard times, especially financially, so that's another challenge that I have to tackle with this rebuild. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun, and we have Mr. Gianluigi Buffon as our goalkeeper. He's 44 years old now, so it's going to be interesting to see when he retires, how old he'll be and how good he can play for us at 44 years of age. So looking at the squad off the rip, we do have a solidly talented squad for the Serie B. I mean, some pretty talented players, especially Adrian Bernabe. He is a very solid youngster, 21 years of age. Used to be uh, at Barca. He is a La Masia graduate. But wage-wise, we're kind of hose wage-wise. We got a lot of money in the wages that we just simply cannot afford because yes, we do have some money for the first transfer window, as we can see, 3.1 million pounds, but projection wise, we're host. So that, like I said, that's a challenge I gotta take on and fix. Now for the first season, I'm gonna go with a pretty generic type Syria style of a tactic. And that is a five in the back tactic. There was a study done and I believe it is more than 40% of the Syria use a five in the back tactic, which is absolutely insane. And they are one of the top five leagues that that is actually one of the more prominent tactics or formations used. So why not put it to the test, see how it can do with this Parma side. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how it does. I mean, looking at the setup should do fairly well. We're also going to be using my elite set pieces probably the entire way through uh, that I genuinely use with every single tactic that I do. But yeah, let's see how we do season one. We do have that 3.1 million pounds to spend. So hopefully we can at least get one game changing player in. But let's see how we do in season one. So at the end of our first season, we go up as champions using that five in the back. 27 wins, 4 draws, 7 losses, 80 goals, 4 on 85 points. And also, as we can see here, we got to the quarterfinals, surprisingly, of the Coppa Italia. But none of that would be possible without three key players, and they were the players that played in our front three. Our right winger right here, Mr. Dennis Mann. Very, very solid player for the Serie B level. He is going to be pretty important in our first couple seasons, I hope, because he is a pretty solid player to play as that inverted winger role. And, I mean, looking at how he is set up attribute-wise, he is perfect for that. But he ended up having six player of the match performances, 11 goals, and 11 assists. So, absolutely vital in our push for promotion and our league winning season in Season 1. Another one that is very important is obviously the left winger. As I had mentioned that it was our front three that was super integral. And I believe his name is Valentin Mihaila. Uh, he is also Romanian and also a very good player for the inverted winger role. And he has the pace that Dennis Mann does not. But Dennis Mann did contribute more assist and goal-wise 
whereas Mr. Valentin, he had eight goals and nine assists, three player of the match performances, underperformed his XG and XA, but still very, very solid season. So Valentin and Dennis Mann both contributing in big time ways. And the player that made the biggest impact in season one and why we won the league is Mr. Kelvin Yeboa, who is who I spent like all of our money on. We made one signing. It was Mr. Kelvin Yeboa from Genoa. Very, very solid striker. Very good young striker. 23 years of age. Some pretty decent potential on him. He has a, I guess you can say, mediocre Holy Trinity of 12 dribbling, 13 finishing, 11 first touch. But he's got pace to him, and that is one reason why I definitely wanted to bring him in. But in 28 games, he scored 26 goals. He also had five assists and six player of the match performances. Very, very important reason why we're going up as league champion season one. And being that, I did bring in Kelvin Yeboah, and like I said, basically spent all of our money on him. They're not giving us any money when, when we're going up to the Serie A. So we have 414,000 pounds to spend on a team that definitely, definitely is going to need some reinforcements for the Serie A level. So going into season two, remember, we did not have a whole lot of money like I had just previously mentioned. So in order to fix that and bring in players that were going to not only help us now, but in the future, I definitely had to offload players and boy, did I offload some players. Some players I did want to keep because I know that they have potential. But, I mean, the potential to be, like, game-breaking for us, they did not have that sort of potential. So, here are some players that I ended up moving on. So, Mr. Jaden Oostervold, young Dutchman, 22 years of age, he ended up moving to VFL Bochum in the Bundesliga for, I believe it was 3.8 million pounds. He does have potential to potentially be a four-star type player, but we definitely, definitely need some players that are going to be game-breaking for us, that are really going to help take us to that next level, make sure that we survive in the Serie A. And yes, he does have some very, very solid attributes. Don't get me wrong. He can play center back. He can play left back. Very, very solid player all the way around and decent-ish with both feet, but 3.8 million pounds for a player that isn't going to be game breaking for us later on. I mean, better to cash in on him now than lose him on a free. Another player that we ended up moving on, which I really didn't want to move him on, but he said he was going to move on a free. So I was like, you know what? I'll just cash in on him now. Sold him to Al Hilal for 2.5 million pounds. Mr. Giuseppe Pazela. Very solid left back or left wing back. So he was very, very solid for us in that push for promotion in that league winning season. But if a player is going to leave on a free, kind of gives me no choice but to sell them. So, I mean, a player that, I mean, as of right now, was a four and a half star player technically for us. Um, he, he, it is a big blow losing him, no doubt. But getting that money to put into some other players, that is definitely what we needed to focus on. And then some two quick hitters. Sold Mr. Hernani to Atletico Mineiro for, I believe it was 875,000 pounds. And then we sold William Cyprian to Pauk for, I think it was almost 700K. I think it was 675,000 pounds. And th this is a player that had a lot, a lot of promise. Uh, when he was at OGC Nice, there were quite a few clubs that wanted him. Uh, when he was at Lens, there were quite a few clubs that wanted him. Uh, OGC needs happened to swoop him up. Parma then br brought him in, but then he was on massive wages that they could not afford. So they had to loan him out when they got relegated. And yeah, so I had to cash in on him for what I could get for him, which was 675k. And now his value's jacked up because the game doesn't know how to gauge that properly this year. So from those sales and a few other small ones, we had around 9 million pounds to spend. Uh, which, I mean, that was making nothing out of something. I think it was actually like 8.75 if I'm to put like a really close number on it. But yeah, the signings we brought in, two of them in particular, absolutely insane. And I hope that they stick around the entire rebuild, especially once you guys are able to have the file because these dudes are going to be game changers. 
So one player that we brought in is Salvatore Esposito for I think it's like 3.9 million pounds with installments that is didn't pay everything up front because we only have 9 million pounds. He is not one of the players that I'm talking about that's going to be an absolute game changer. He is going to be very important though within this season and making sure that we survive because in that ball winning midfielder role that we have centrally in that 5 to 3 he is going to have to absolutely ball out with Bernabe. So hopefully this young 22-year-old that we brought in from Spal is up to the challenge. Now a player that is one of those game changers for 2.1 million pounds, absolute steal in my opinion, we're bringing in Mr. Daniel Maldini from AC Milan. And he can play all across the front for attacking positions is he a player that's going to light the world on fire? No, not yet. Is he a player that could potentially grow into that? Yes, absolutely. As he might have four to five star potential, probably most likely the four star potential, but he is a player that is going to be absolutely integral for us staying up this season. And I mean, our winger depth adding him, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, <laughs> bringing him in when he's 21 and for as cheap as we did, that is an absolute bargain and a half. Now, another player that I did pay for on installments because it's 9.5 million pounds in total is Mr. Arda Guler. Now, if you guys do not know who he is, in my opinion, I know that Endrick is overall the top rated wonder kid in the game. I think Arda Guler is better. The, looking at his base attributes, the, this is him a season in hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot attribute wise he's absolutely insane bought him for 9.5 million pounds via installments i think i paid 2.5 million up front he's already worth 52 million to 60 million pounds and his attributes like i said they are absolutely ludicrous for an 18 year old he can play any position that you could possibly need him to play as well he has some decent player traits like dictates tempo arrives late in the opponent's area which i love on players this year so he is going to be very very important in bringing him in that is an absolute game changer because he has the same potential as daniel maldini if both of them can hit that five star that'd be incredible but even if both of them hit the four that's still going to be absolutely insane because i mean look at this kid's attributes He's a world beater. Now some quick hitters signing wise, Diego Queiroz. I brought him in from Familia Cal on a free transfer because we needed some center back depth. Brought in Luca Gemello or Gemello from Torino. He is going to be our new goalkeeper because I have it to where we sign him mandatory fee at the end of the season for 875,000 pounds. Jim Luigi Buffon is still playing currently. He is now 45 years old. So if he chooses to retire, he will then be 46, which I would understand if he retired then. But Luca Jamelo is the future between the sticks for us as of right now. Maybe we get a better goalkeeper in the future as he does only have a uh, four-star potential ability. But I mean, he still is going to be a very, very solid goalkeeper. And he is going to be our starting goalkeeper for this season because he is actually on the same attribute level now as Gianluigi Buffon and he is younger so I would rather get that development and then the last player we brought in is Giacomo Cagliata he is a left back left wing back that also is going to be brought in on a mandatory future fee for I think a million pounds I believe it is so he is going to be a very important player for us this season and hopefully to come in future seasons maybe he becomes like a depth left back but he is going to be very important early on because he is a player that we need desperately after losing our starting left back to Al Hilal. So this is the 5-2-3 that we played last season. We're also going to use it this season. Keeping it the exact same. Going to be playing Kelvin Yaboa every single game based on the season that he had previously. And then Mr. Gamello is going to be in making sure that he plays every single game going forward so that he gets that development the uh, that development i can english that he needs to grow so that is what we're going to be rocking for season two let's go ahead and simulate and see how we do so with our first season done and dusted back up in the syria we finished 13th 
So we finished in safety, but we did lose too many games for my liking with losing 21. So we might need to change some stuff up or try and bring in some stronger players because, I mean, we only scored 39 goals, unfortunately, which I have a feeling majority of those probably came from Kelvin Ubella um, because a lot of the other players are playmakers. But we did survive, so hopefully... We, we end up growing from this because 13th is definitely a good starter point after getting promotion because the teams that came up with us are going down, except for Frozenone. They are staying up. So going into season three, we have 271,000 pounds to make signings with. That is absolutely amazing, let me tell you. So yeah, we're going to have to sell off players again and make money any way we possibly can again so discord thank you for voting on a team that is super financially unstable this is entertaining and challenging for sure so going in to season three like i said not gonna have a whole heck of a lot of money tried to sell some players no one wanted to leave also no one wanted to bring in players so i was like you know what let's just go ahead hang on to everyone that is good enough to stay here and the only way that I could improve the side and make sure that we have the depth that we needed was loans. And that is what I did in a lot of them. Mr. Festi Ebosele, he is going to be our backup right back, can also be a backup left back for season three. And we do have an option to buy if we wish to do so. I'm not sure that we're going to trigger it though, because once again, we don't have money and we're probably not going to have money. But he is very pacey, and I, I do like that. So hopefully he can get some games with us and make sure that we survive this Serie A season. Another player that I brought in, left back slash left wing back, Mr. Josh Wilson Esbrin, or Esbran, not sure how to say it, from Man City, or no, yeah, Man City, I think. He's on loan, yes, from Man City, yeah. So he is also very pacey that's kind of what i try to focus on because we don't have a heck of a lot of pace so i wanted to make sure that we were bringing in pace with these loans and also they are young so it's going to be way easier to get these loans but also have an option to buy on him as well for the future so if him and Ebisele impress they might see themselves become a permanent part of the Parma squad also real quick before we move on to the next loan signing the goal basically for this save, well not save, rebuild with Parma is to make sure that we get them back to an established level in the Serie A, potentially get into a top 10 spot and make Europe maybe, that, that's like the ultimate goal, but we also need to make sure that we get them financially stable, that is a big time goal with this. So if we can make sure that they have money, and when I'm passing this save off to all of you that decide to take it on, uh, my, my main goal is make sure that you guys have money in the bank uh, because currently we have nothing. So another player that I brought in on loan, Tommaso Milanese, another backup player that's not going to start every single game. But I mean, attribute wise, super, super balanced. Um, he does have some pretty decent potential. He is on loan from Cremonese. Uh, he is a very, very talented player that does have the ability to spray the ball from anywhere. His vision definitely needs to improve, but his passing's okay for this level. Technique's okay for this level. Uh, work rate, though, that is great to have because I don't really have a whole lot of players with a high work rate. Another backup left back slash center back is Francisco Machado. So he is basically here for depth. I don't think he's going to be starting a whole heck of a lot of games. He is a depth option. Another depth option. I don't even know if I want to attempt to say this name. We're going to call him Helgeson. Helgeson from Lecce, a young Icelandic player. Also have an option to buy on him. Not sure I'm going to trigger it. Uh, but he does have some decent attributes. It's just he definitely has a lot of growing to do still. And that is what we are kind of offering with this. Now a player that is in on loan and will be staying is Mr. Alexander Borkovic, who I have loaned in from Werder Bremen, and he is going to potentially become a mainstay within our defense, especially if he hits this potential ability. 
because right now we don't have a whole lot of players that are at that potential ability, uh, except for a couple of forwards. Uh, but he is pretty solid. He's pretty well-rounded. And I mean, why not sign a dude that's literally only going to cost a million pounds that will probably be here the entire rebuild. And the last player that I brought in, because unfortunately Gianluigi Buffon retired at the age of 46, Mr. Samuel Suarez from Benfica. So he is going to be sharing the net with our goalkeeper, Mr. Gramello. I think that is his name. I don't know. I've signed so many players already. Samuel Suarez and him are going to be sharing the net and hopefully they can secure some wins to stay safe and not get relegated because that is once again the goal in this season is to just not get relegated because we have no money and we need to make money. We need to be in the Serie A and we need to make money because the mob's not going to help us. So this time around, not going to have Gamello play as our keeper. It's Gamello. Not Gramello, it's Gamello, there we go. He's not going to be in every single game because we brought in Suarez, so I'm going to hopefully have them both sharing time. And then Mr. Maldini, Arta Guler, and Kelvin Yeboa are all going to stay up top, and I just realized I did not tell you guys how many goals Kelvin Yeboa scored last season. And he scored 17, there we go. 17 of our 39 goals were Mr. Kelvin Yeboa. So he was kind of our whole offense. We definitely, definitely need some more offense this season. Where it's going to come from, I don't know. It's still probably going to come from him. But with those three being locked in in this 5-2-3, hopefully we're going to see some growth from them. And hopefully they're all going to be able to help us stay up and not go down. Because if we go down, I don't want to lose these three. I really don't because they are the future of this club. We need them to perform well. Hopefully they do. Let's get on and see how we do in season three. I honestly can't believe this. Season three with, I th don't think it was a stronger team, but apparently it was. We went up a spot. We moved into 12th. How about that? It's finished on 39 points and we scored more. So that's good. We also lost two less games. So we're making slow improvements. We'll, we'll take that. So, I have not brought up the Italian Cup now for two seasons, and that's for one reason, one reason only. Very forgettable experiences. We're really bad at it now. I don't know how we go from getting into the quarterfinal in our first season, and then now we don't know how to play football when we get to the Italian Cup. So, that's a lot of fun. That's great. Probably not going to win an Italian Cup, unfortunately. But, Kelvin Yeboa, still our entire offense. 21 goals this season. So, we definitely need to help him out. And help him out we did because we brought in reinforcements because of one reason only. We were given no money once again. And unfortunately, Adrian Bernabe had his release clause met that was in his contract. So Adrian Bernabe is now at Leicester City and it brought in 14 million pounds, I think. Then I think two other players got sold as well, brought in like 17 million pounds. So we went on a spending spree. Now the first part of a spending spree that we had was... Honestly, a free transfer. It was a wage type of spending spree. We brought in Keanu Hoover on a free transfer, which I was very surprised that we were able to pull that off. And I am hoping that he can hit a level that I know the kid can hit. And within this side that we now have, I definitely think it's going to be possible. Another player that I brought in on a free is Emmanuel Giabua. I've heard some good things about this kid. Comes from Atalanta on a free Hopefully he can develop and become something for us, but really right now just focusing on him being a squad player. Another player that I brought in on a free former Inter Milan player, Lorenzo Pirola. Squad depth at center back, which you can never have enough when you're playing a five in the back. The first signing for a fee though is a backup left back, Gianluca Frabota, because we needed depth at defense and we definitely definitely need to bring him in don't know why he's already regressing so that's not good but Gianluca for Bota brought him in from Union Berlin for I think it was 525k so solid player for that price not gonna lie then when we lost our midfielder and Bernabe had to bring in one as well so we brought in Morton Friendrup from Genoa we keep on going back to Genoa for players don't know why 
But Morton Frendrup brought him in for, I think it was like 4 million pounds. Very solid player, going to play that ball winning midfielder role. Hopefully he can be a baller for us. Then we brought in another central midfielder, Alexander Pavlovich from Werder Bremen this time. He does not start at Werder Bremen though. I don't know where he starts off at, but brought in Alexander Pavlovich. Looks to be a very, very solid player. Good playmaking player. Uh, hopefully he is someone that we can build around because he's got good current ability already, uh, which will be playing that deep line playmaker role probably. And then he does have some decent potential. So if we can help him realize that, that'd be awesome. We then move on to a goalkeeper that I absolutely love and adore. And I think everyone should try and bring him in. It's Mr. Ruslan Nesharet. Brought him in from Dinamo Kiev. He is a very, very solid young goalkeeper. Had to bring him in because we needed a solidified number one. He is exactly that. And I mean, at six foot three, 23 years of age, didn't have to spend an arm and a leg to get him either. He is going to be a very, very solid option for us. Being that we spent six million pounds on Ruslan Nesharet, we had a little bit of money still left to spend. This was done with installments, as was Nesharet. We brought in one of the most popular wonder kids for the past couple of years. Mr. Yusuf Demir brought him in from Galatasaray. 8 million pounds in total with the installments and whatnot. Um, hopefully we are able to hold on to them. Uh, all of these players, that is, because I know that a couple of them will probably become pretty good, especially Nesharet and Mr. Yusuf Demir. But Yusuf Demir brought him in because... We need more attacking threats. We definitely, definitely do. He can play striker. He can play wing, center attacking mid, central midfield. That is what I had in mind. He had versatility and he's an absolute baller as well. But getting into the tactical system that we're going to be playing in season four, being that we brought in Mr. Yusuf Demir and you saw, okay, he plays center attacking mid. Why do we need a center attacking mid when we're playing a 5-2-3? Because we're switching to a 4-2-3-1, except Arda Guler, is going to be playing the attacking mid spot. He's going to play every single darn game as well. Mr. Kelvin Yubo is going to play every single game up top. And then Mr. Ruslan Nesharet is going to be playing every single game in net. So hopefully we do really, really well. We have played the, our Italian Cup game already. That's why you might see two goals over here right now from Kelvin Yubo. Do you imagine that? The entire offense again. But yeah, we're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1. Hopefully everyone can produce. And having Yusuf Demir on the right wing and Mr. Daniel Maldini on the left with Mihaela and uh, Dennis Sanz? San? I think Mans. Mans. That's what it is. Having them there, depth, that is very, very good. So hopefully we can do pretty well and move up again from 12th because we moved up from 13th to 12th. Then we moved from 12th to 10th. We will see how it works out. But let's go ahead, simulate Season 4, and see how things get on. All right, so Season 4 done and dusted. We finished in the exact same spot in 12th. So everything I did did not improve whatsoever. We did score way more goals, though. We have 57 goals for, 64 against. Goal differential, much better than it has been. And we finished on more points, on 48 points. One thing that I have noticed, though, apparently Lazio are really bad. They finished in 15th, but they are in the, UV the UEFA Champions League, which I guess they either won the Europa League or they won the Italian Cup. It's one or the other. But finishing in 12th, I guess I'll take. It just proves that we still have a little bit of ways to go. And player-wise, our performances, Kelvin Yeboa, once again, putting in an absolute shift on offense. 25 goals in the league. Dude's an absolute baller for, I mean, he's not really improving all that much, which sucks, but I mean, 25 goals, he's already at 89 goals for the club. So he's definitely going to hit a hundred unless he gets bought for season five. Mr. Arta Guler also playing in an attacking mid on support role, decided to score goals instead of get assists. He did get six assists, but he got 12 goals and the kids improving. He is an absolute baller, and everyone needs to sign him. He is incredible. I can, I can only imagine how good he's going to be at the end of Season 5 because if he's already improved a little bit in some of these areas, I have a feeling by the end of Season 5, once he's 22, we're going to see a little bit more green everywhere. 
Yusuf Demir, season one with us, six goals, eight assists. I suppose we'll take that. He's worth 17 million and 19 million pounds. Um, so that investment that we put in, he has already doubled it. And Mr. Daniel Maldini, nine goals, nine assists in the league, but 10 goals, 12 assists overall. So he is starting to come into his own. Potential ability-wise, he's only going to be able to hit three and a half star, apparently. I have a feeling that that's a lie. The stars do lie sometimes. So we'll see how he does in season five. But now that we have looked over who's done what, let's get on to season five. So in the intro, like I said, season five, there is a uh, bit of, of, a, of a twist to the tale here with Parma. Um, something happens in January that I did not know was going to happen. So what you guys are about to see is me telling you guys transfers that I originally brought in. And then something weird and crazy happens that actually somehow helps for season five. So this is very, very interesting. So being that it's season five going in, I was thinking, okay, you guys are going to be able to have access to the safe file. I want to make sure that I have some players to help you guys in the future. So I'm bringing in Fabiano for 1.2 million pounds from Santos. Yes, he might only have three star potential, maybe four. I think that's a lie because he's only 18. And he has 16 dribbling and 19 finishing. He also has 17 balance and 15 stamina and 16 work rate, 16 determination. He is definitely going to outgrow that potential. That's all I know. He likes round keeper and likes a lot of keeper as well. So saw him. Okay. Absolute worldy of a goal scorer. That is one reason why I'm bringing him in. He can also play striker and winger. So a little bit of versatility there. Then brought in Mr. Chris Barton, another player that I'm not sold on his potential. I think it is higher. He is six foot five at 18 years old. Young American bringing him in from Atlanta United. And he has 15 tackling already and 15 jumping reach. So this kid's going to be pretty darn good. Once again, signings for the future for you guys that take over these saves, which I might actually push on with this save because it has been fun. Very challenging, breaking my brain, hurting my brain, but very fun. Then the last player that I brought in is Alessandro Greco from Napoli. This kid looks absolutely disgusting. He has the building blocks of the Holy Trinity, just like our young Brazilian kid does. But our young Brazilian kid definitely has better dribbling, whereas Greco has better first touch. So take that as you will. But his potential apparently is way better than both of the other players that I am bringing in. He looks really, really good on paper. Let's just hope he pans out. So going into season five, no major additions. I, I wanted to rock with the same group of people um, because, I mean, they... They're starting to grow into their own. They're all, they're all young kids. So let's give them a season together and see if you can win something with kids. See if you can do better with them. The only two players that are going to be playing every single game is Ruslan Nesheret and Arda Guler for the exact same reasons as last time. But Arda Guler is already starting to just, I mean, really come into his own. 62 million pounds and 70 million pounds. He is an absolute baller. I have a feeling that this season's going to be his coming out party. So here I am midway through season five because I usually stop in January to find free transfers uh, to kind of load up on some young talents for the future and make sure that I am doing what is best for the club being that we don't have a heck of a lot of money. Um, the club did something to get money and I do not approve of it whatsoever. They sold Yusuf Demir. They sold Yusuf Demir. The board decided to sell Yusuf Demir. For no reason. I didn't have a release clause in his contract or anything. They just decided to sell him. Because the offer's too good to turn down. 24 and a half million pounds is it. That's it. And they sell him to Man United. So, that sucks. And then they also did the same thing with Alexander Pavlovich. The exact same thing. Too good of an offer to turn down, apparently, from the board. So this is fun. We do have a lot of money now. 
we have 48 million pounds. So I guess let's get spending. Now, at the time that that happened in January, we were seventh in the league. I don't know why the board decided to do what they did, but they did. So yeah, we have a lot of money to spend now. Let's see how we spend it though. So first player that I brought in because we definitely needed some depth up front now with the sale of Yusuf Thamir is a player that could play any attacking position. Mr. Rodrigo Gomez for 2 million pounds. This kid, I hope, I mean, he has potential to become something squad player wise. I feel like this kid's going to be an absolute baller. Another player that I really, really like is Mr. Adam Karabec. And he was available for really, really cheap from Juve because Juve bought him from Sparta Prague. This kid has the potential to be pretty solid as well, but for right now is a squad player. He can play center mid or center attacking mid. So if Artiguler needs a break, he can slot in at center attacking mid. If who we brought in to play at center mid needs a break, he can also slot in there because you guys are going to love who I brought in to play at center mid. Brought in another player for the feature that can play striker, center attacking mid, or at right wing from Armenia Bielefeld, young Austrian named Henning Behrens, who potentially has five-star potential. And, I mean, looking at it, I definitely believe it. Plus, he is six foot freaking six. What is not to like about that? We have our own Zlatan. Next up, I think this is going to be absolute steal of a signing. Mr. Jamie Lawrence. Bringing him in to play center back. Can also play center and defensive mid if ever playing like a 4-3-3 potentially. Um, he is going to be pretty darn good. Another player that can play striker, right wing, or center attacking mid. See, I'm giving everyone options for the future. What's not to like about that? But also, this kid looks ridiculous as well. He's not six foot six like the last guy, but 13 dribbling, 13 finishing, 15 first touch. Beginning stages of the Holy Trinity. That is absolutely perfect from Mr. Blishko. Then brought in one of my favorite Norwegian youngsters. For I think it was 4.2 million pounds. Also at Juve, we brought him over just like Adam Karabec. Very solid player, Mr. Osama Sharawi. He is going to be depth, but can also be a regular starter. I think that's why I signed him to. He can play left wing, right wing, or center attacking mid. Dude's going to be a baller. Now this player is more so a player that needs time to develop. Brought in Isaac Babadi from PSV Eindhoven. Potential five stars. Can play anywhere in the midfield, anywhere in the attacking midfield, and striker if need be. Potential five star. This kid has what it takes to get there as well. 15 determination there will definitely help him. And he he is young, 21 years of age. So he has a little bit less time than the others to hit his potential. But he, I definitely think he'll get there. Now, this is one of the more expensive signings that I had. Marco Constantini for 10 million pounds. Everyone was done on installments, by the way. So I wasn't spending, like, insane money. Uh, he is one for the future. 15 uh, positioning, 15 tackling, 20 determination, 15 decisions, 15 jumping reach. Six foot four, he's 19. Young Italian, brought in from AC Milan. The future of the back line. And then the one that I've been waiting to show you guys that I was so, so happy Barcelona did not want anymore. I almost brought in two players from there. The other one, I would have paid 40 grand more than any other player that I had. But we ended up not bringing him in because this kid is younger. can play the same positions, but he can also play on the wing. We brought in Mr. Pablo Torre from Barcelona for 12.5 million pounds up front. Um, actually, no, not up front. In installments. I think. No. My brain's fried. I don't know. It was a deal. That's all I know. Pablo Torre, amazing current ability, amazing potential. This kid with Arta Guler and company is going to be absolutely insane. So, another player for the future that those of you that take over the save file, you guys are going to have a boatload of fun with. So, with all those sightings wrapped up, there were some other ones as well, but did not want to take up too much time on all that. Uh, just wanted to highlight who I really spent a lot of money on. This team should definitely finish top 10 now. Having Artiguler and Pablo Torre, which Artiguler 
He's absolutely insane right now. I'm not going to show you guys how he looks until the end of the season because I was right. This is his coming out party. He is absolutely insane. So I guess without further ado, let's get to the end of season five and recap how this whole rebuild's gone. Oh my word, we did a thing. Parma, we finished an eighth on 64 points. That's the most that we've had this entire time. 18 wins, 10 draws, 10 losses, 73 goals for. We done did, figured it out. We had the players necessary to make the 4-2-3-1 work, and we qualified for Europe. In my book, that is success with Parma with what's been happening. And my main question was, are we going to have money for all of you to have come the next season and in the in the balance? We have money in the bank, which we never have with this club. So that's great to see. We, we, we are hitting on a lot of things that I wanted to hit on. Now, I want to look at the squad overall with who did what in our final season. Majority of the goals, once again, came from Kelvin Yeboah. 29 goals. Dude, the absolute baller now has, let me check, 115 goals for the club. So he's definitely one of the top scorers for the club all time. Then Mr. Articular, who unfortunately was injured at the end of the season, had 11 goals. He also had 16 assists. That's the best season he has had. 7.23 average rating. And if we look at his attributes, the dude's absolutely nuts. He's absolutely insane, folks. Set piece specialist with 16 corners, 16 free kick taking. He also has 19 technique, by the way, and 18 vision to go with that 16 passing. He can also be your pen taker. His off the ball is 17, 17 flare. 17 composure he has the holy trinity if you want to play him at striker uh with 16 dribbling 15 finishing 17 first touch he also has 15 crossing 16 agility whatever you want this kid to do he is going to be able to do and five star potential player he is absolutely absurd Th this is steel of the rebuild daniel maldini in the final season his potential ability did go up by a half a star. He's 25 years old now. Doing pretty solid. Like I said, when we originally signed him, not a player that's going to set the world on fire, but he had 12 assists and nine goals in the league. So we'll definitely, definitely take that. And then I wanted to see how Mr. Pablo Torre did, uh, just so we can see how he did in the limited games that he did get to play. Three assists, three goals. So that's definitely going to go up, especially when there are actual human beings managing him game in game out he is going to produce like crazy um so i mean the the future of this team is absolutely absurd and once again you have money we brought money into the club that literally had nothing so let's recap this rebuild and how it went started with me losing absolutely everything and me a day later having to redo the entire thing i think i did a pretty darn good job at doing that and also with the signings that i made they were some pretty good signings especially mr artiguler and mr pablo torre um those are two amazing signings uh but wanted to make sure that i left this club with money in the bank and a transfer budget did that wanted to make sure that they are now an established club within the syria did that wanted to make sure that i got a top 10 finish did that and with that top 10 finish we qualified for a European competition. Yes, it's not the prettiest one, but it is a European competition nonetheless. So I guess challenge-wise for those of you that wish to take on this save, here are your three challenges. Number one, keep Artiguler at the club. There's going to be clubs that want him. There already are, and one of them is PSG. So good luck. Number two, being that I qualified for the Europa Conference League, Reach that proper and in a five-year time span, try and win one of the European competitions. You have the potential in the squad to do so. You definitely do. And with doing well and having some higher finishes, you'll get even more money in the club. And then number three, with the strikers that I brought in, I think I brought in four. Try and make one of them your next Calvin Yeboa. Try and make one of them your next talisman for this Parma side. Because one of them is bound to be a world beater. One of them. 
Well, with all that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you guys did enjoy, please hit that like, comment, and subscribe. A subscribe is 100% free, so I want to hit the sub button. And if you guys wish to give this save a go, I'll be linking it down below in my Discord, which is down in the description. So make sure to check that out if you guys wish to do so. And let me know how you guys get on with it, either in the Discord or tweet at me as well. Or even come back to this video, leave a comment. I will make sure to check it. Also, let me know what clubs you would like to see in the future as well rebuilt. Make sure that they are within the playable leagues of FM though. Because I want to make sure that they I don't have to download a database to do one of them. But yeah. With all that being said, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.